So it's really exciting that Newfoundland and Labrador is going to be the second province to ban blast plastic bags on July 1st. It's outstanding, real political will and capacity there. But the question for me, because I focus on marine plastics, is what's going to happen in that specific region once the bag ban comes in. I have a huge data set that stretches all the way back to 2014, gathered by citizen scientists that show that about 80 to 85% of the waste that ends up on shorelines here is plastic. Of that, only 2% is plastic bags. What's really interesting about that data is that we have some from Nain in Labrador, where that community put in a plastic bag ban in 2009, one of the first in the world, right, really cutting edge. And so what I find is that some of the highest percentages of plastic bags are in Labrador, including Nain, which is 11% of their waste are plastic bags, compared to the 2% of the rest of the province. And of that 11%, none of it are carrier bags, like from Sobeys. They're all the bags that are in our exemption. Garbage bags, Ziploc bags, bags from fish and packaging food. So plastic bag ban is one step of a multi-step process. The second step is, okay, what do you do now? Right now, there's been a coordinated response to ban the bag, but there isn't an equal coordinated response to find an alternative that is not other types of disposables, specifically plastic disposables. And so that's where a lot of work remains. Before July 1st, people have to start coordinating businesses, government, NGOs, community groups. What are we gonna provide that's different? What's going to be made available? Because that's what's getting used. So this is why I'm really looking for people to find, a especially for the people of Newfoundland and Labrador who are very good at making do, who have very long memories for generations. What are the types of things that we use before disposables, before plastics of any kind to package our items? And how and when can we return to those? So step one is banning bags. Step two is finding good alternatives. Step three is then moving that political will and that precedent into working on the plastics that are more meaningful for this province. And in this province, that's fishing gear and cigarette butts. In my studies, when I look in the guts of animals for plastics, I'm probably not gonna notice the effect of the bag ban. I will notice if we move on cigarette butts and on fishing gear. I'm hoping that in Newfoundland and Labrador, because we're an ocean province, because uh, a lot of our culture, our identity, our lives and our livelihoods happen on the ocean, we'll have the political will and capacity to move to fishing gear and move to cigarette butts, which will not be banned. You cannot ban those things. And so there's going to be much more intricate work moving on from plastic bags for that. And I think we have the guts to do it.